Hi everybody, today is January 29th, 2013. Thanks to one of my subscribers, they sent me this link. Government wants to dispose of radioactive waste by putting it in our silverware. Department of Energy wants to let radioactive scrap metal back into consumer products. Notice it says back into. The overwhelming scientific consensus is that any amount of radiation, no matter how small, can cause cancer and other serious health effects. It alters your DNA, which is really bad for children. Children are more susceptible than adults. Current safety standards are based on the ridiculous assumption that everyone exposed is a healthy man in his 20s and that radioactive particles ingested into the body cause no more damage than radiation hitting the outside of the body. In the real world, however, even low doses of radiation can cause cancer. Moreover, small particles of radiation called internal emitters, which get inside the body, are much more dangerous than general exposure to radiation. And they have links to two different articles. And radiation affects small children much more than full-grown adults. But the Department of Energy, the agency which is responsible for the design, testing, and production of all U.S. nuclear weapons, promotes nuclear energy as one of its core functions, which has been covering up nuclear accidents for decades, and has used mutant lines of human cells to promote voodoo anti-scientific arguments, proposing letting radiation into our silverware. Counterpunch notes. Even the deregulation happy Wall Street Journal sounded shocked. The Department of Energy is proposing to allow the sale of tons of scrap metal from government nuclear sites in an attempt to reduce waste that critics say could lead to radiation tainted belt buckles, surgical implants, and other consumer products. Having failed in the 80s and 90s to free the nuclear bomb factories and national laboratories of millions of tons of their radioactively contaminated scrap and nickel, the DOE is trying again. Its latest proposal is moving ahead without even an environmental impact statement. Those messy EISs involving public hearings. So you can imagine the DOE's reluctance to face the public over adding yet more radiation to the doses we are already accumulating. Let's not forget the fallout from Fukushima that we're all getting. Congressman Markley writes, A Department of Energy proposal to allow up to 14,000 metric tons of its radioactive scrap metal to be recycled into consumer products was called into question today by Representative Ed Markley of Massachusetts due to concerns over public health. In a letter sent to DOE head Stephen Chung, Representative Markley expressed grave concerns over the potential for these metals to become jewelry, cuttery, or other consumer products that could exceed healthy doses of radiation without any knowledge by the consumer. DOD made the proposal to rescind its earlier moratorium on radioactive scrap metal recycling in December 2012. The proposal follows an incident from 2012 involving Bed Bath & Beyond stores in America recalling tissue holders made in India that were contaminated with the radioactive isotope cobalt-60. Those products were shipped to 200 stores in 20 states. In response to that incident, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission spokesperson advised members of the public to return the products even though the amount of contamination was not considered to be a health risk. There was also a recall of dog dish bowls that were made in China or Japan, I don't remember, but those were also recalled too about the same time. This is not the first time this has happened. As the Progressive reported in 1998, radioactive scrap metal was ending up in everything from silverware to frying pans and belt buckles. The Department of Energy has a problem. What to do with millions of tons of radioactive material? So the DOE has come up with an ingenious plan to dispose of its troublesome tons of nickel, copper, steel, and aluminum. It wants to let scrap companies collect the metal, try to take the radiation out, right, and sell the metal to foundries, which would in turn sell it to manufacturers who could use it for everyday household products. Pots, pans, forks, spoons, and even your eyeglasses. You may not know this, but the government already permits some companies under special licenses to buy, reprocess, and sell radioactive metal. 7,500 tons in 1996 by one industry estimate. But the amount of this reprocessing could increase dramatically if the DOE, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, NRC, and the burgeoning radioactive metal processing industry get their way. They are pressing for a new lax standard 
that would do away with special permits and allow companies to buy and resell millions of tons of low-level radioactive metal. I have an idea. They can make it into cars. Cars take tons of metal, don't they? And only sell them to government officials, people who make up these laws and rulings, you know, DOE, NRC, etc. And they'd be specially built cars of recycled radioactive material just for them. The standard the companies seek to cause nearly 100,000 cancer fatalities in the United States by the NRC's own estimates. A couple of years later, Congressman Markley successfully banned most radioactive scrap, but now DOE is trying to bring it back. Radioactive scrap is a global problem, as Bloomberg reported last year. The major risk we face in our industry is radiation, said Paul De Bruin, radiation safety chief for Gwantel Stainless Processing, one of the world's biggest stainless steel scrapyards. You can talk about security all you want, but I found weapons grade uranium in scrap. Where was the security? More than 120 shipments of contaminated goods, including cutlery, buckles, and work tools, such as hammers and screwdrivers, were denied U.S. entry between 2003 and 2008 after Customs and the Department of Homeland Security boosted radiation monitoring at its borders. Makes you wonder how much of it actually comes through. I'm sure what they found it was only a tip of the iceberg. The department declined to provide updated figures or comment on how the metal tissue boxes at Bed Bath & Beyond tainted with cobalt-60 used in medical instruments to diagnose and treat cancer evaded detection. And like I said, the dog dishes, the metal dog bowls that also seem to have been missed. The general public basically isn't aware that they're living in a radioactive world, according to Ross Bartley, technical director for the Recycling Bureau, who said the contamination has led to lost sales. Those tissue boxes are problematic because they're radioactive and they had to be put in a radioactive disposal. Abandoned medical scanners, food processing devices, and mining equipment containing radioactive metals such as cesium-137 and cobalt-60 are picked up by scrap collectors, sold to recyclers, and melted down by foundries, the IAEA says. Dangerous scrap comes from derelict hospitals and military bases as well as defunct government agencies that have lost tools with radioactive elements. Chronic exposure to low dose of radiation can lead to cataracts, cancer, and birth defects, according to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. A 2005 study of more than 6,000 Taiwanese who lived in apartments built with radioactive reinforcing steel from 1983 to 2005 showed a statistically significant increase in leukemia and breast cancer. India and China were the top sources of radioactive goods shipped to the U.S. through 2008 according to the Department of Homeland Security. Bartley, a metallurgist who has tracked radioactive contamination since the early 1990s, said there's no evidence the situation has improved. Two years after an Indian scrap metal worker died from radiation exposure, the world's second most populous country hasn't installed alarms, the Ministry of Shipping said in December. The same thing could easily happen again tomorrow, said Deepak Jain, 65, who owns the yard where the worker died. We have no protection. The government promises a lot, but has delivered absolutely nothing. Indeed, we are being bombarded by low-level radiation from all sides. Above-ground nuclear tests created background levels of radioactive cesium and iodine for the first time. There's a link. Countries dump everything from radiation from nuclear meltdowns to radioactive submarines in the ocean. There's a place, I believe it's in the Black Sea, that Russia has done that extensively. There's also an area by the Canary Islands that, that has been done and in the air. In Japan, radioactive crops are being mixed into non-radiated foods. They also do that with milk in Russia because of Chernobyl. The U.S. apparently signed a pact with Japan agreeing that the U.S. will continue buying seafood from Japan despite that the food is not being tested for radioactive materials. Previous testing showed it was not healthy to eat any of the seafood coming from Japan. Much of our food is now intentionally radiated. The government has even treated some people as guinea pigs. What can we do? 
counterpunch notes. You can tell the DOE to continue to keep his radioactive metal out of the commercial metal supply. Comrades and our personal items. You can demand a full environmental impact statement. And the comment deadline is February 9, 2013. And they give a government email address. It says scrap underscore capital PEA comments at hq.doe.gov and they give a snail mail address too and they'll probably all end up in their recycled bin everything you send they don't care what we say they thumb their noses at the citizens of the world all right bookmark my site I'll keep everyone up to date please stay safe be aware and I'll talk to you later God bless you all bye